Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship. It's lovely to see you all this morning. I'm sorry you can't see me, but I'm not ready for YouTube yet. And my hair's messy this morning. So you get my cat and uh, behind a lot of ministers, there are some very incredible cats. So it's good that you get to see mine today, Wesley. Believe it or not, I haven't led a whole morning service on Zoom yet. And when I do my weekly evening services at Trinity, I don't use PowerPoint or music. And I've already hit a problem this morning, which means I'm going to have to come out of screen share to play the audio files. I'm afraid you won't be able to see the words, but you might know them enough to join in. Um, so I hope that will be all right. It's just going to be a bit messy. I'm working on a very old laptop, which has done brilliantly since lockdown, um, but it's just not quite up to uh, up to the job. Anyway, we're going to begin by taking a moment to recognise that we're bound together in the spirit and that wherever we are, God is with us. we're going to read together Psalm 100 and if you could read the words in yellow type. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. I'll put the next prayer up on the screen. Join in if you want to, or just pray along quietly. Let us pray. Wonderful God, worthy of all worship, exalted throughout the universe, our faithful, gentle shepherd. You have called us into your pasture and we are yours. Your love is everlasting and sure. We give you our hearts and you hear them sound our deepest songs of praise. Amen. We're going to sing together. I hope you can lar it if you don't know the words King of Kings, Majesty. King of Kings, Majesty.
Let us pray. Magnificent God, more than we can name and know, your ways are high above our ways, your thoughts far beyond ours. You know the secrets of the universe, spin planets from your fingertips, compose the music of the spheres. Creation is too small a palace for you. We worship you as the one above us all. Surprising God, you confound our expectation by caring for each sparrow, numbering every hair, stooping low to wash feet, smiling from the small. This is where we find you travelling each step beside us, taking it at our pace, promising never to leave us. God, your glory shines from each ordinary place and in every battered heart. We are your palace, never too insignificant, never too broken or faulty for you. God of outrageous grace, you have made us your home. Every day, God, our light, our hope, for your enormous love, meeting us where we are, we worship you. Amen. Sorry to utter the immortal Zoom words, but I'm going to ask Helen to unmute herself now while she reads the Gospel. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. 
for I was hungry, and he gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and he gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I ended up and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or, need, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Amen. Thank you, Helen. And the same to John. Yeah, this uh, reading is Paul's first letter to the Ephesians, well, only letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses uh, 15 to 23. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I don't know about you, but I sometimes wish that I could tape up the letterbox because all sorts of things end up coming through, which I don't necessarily want. And they'd be better just to put them straight in my recycling bin outside. So I didn't look at this properly when it came through the door. I just left it near the door mat and walked round it for several days until I got round to recycling. And I thought it must be a flyer from the estate agent and figured that I'd end up in prison if I tried to sell the mounts. So I ignored it some more. But when I picked it up, I realised the leaflet was an invitation to, to win a lovely looking house, a million pound house. Now, I know I'm a Methodist and there are rules about gambling, but I headed straight upstairs to my computer to take the one that works to take part in a charity raffle. I knew that if I could just win that house, all my problems would be solved. I'd have somewhere to live when I retire. 
and I'd never have to worry about the parking spaces being full at Cheadle Hugh Methodist Church because the house is just round the corner so I could walk easy surely it was meant to be I'm still getting over the fact that my number didn't come up so I'm going to spend my next day off thinking about pension plans I can't rely on any inheritance I've already inherited my grandma's piano which is beautiful and I'm in line for the small Moorcroft vase my mum and dad had as, had as a present when I was baptised but that's about it all in all not much good but both the passages we heard this morning talk about inheritance Matthew about inheriting the kingdom and Ephesians about inheriting a host of wonderful things all better than a million pound house a glorious inheritance from God who promises hope and God's power things which are impossible to measure well, that sounds more like it. But what do you have to do to inherit all of this? You don't have to enter a charity raffle. This inheritance comes from being blessed by God, who promises us his kingdom and tells us it's been prepared for us since the beginning of time. God's love is unconditional, but inheriting the kingdom does come with a special mindset and special actions. But before we get into that, let's just give the passage a bit of context. I don't know about you, but just hearing about it made me feel a bit alarmed. This passage comes really near the end of Matthew's Gospel, and it's part of a set of parables that talk about the end times. It focuses on what happens when Christ comes in glory. But we also have to see it in the context of Jesus's earthly story. And in chapter 25, Jesus is only a few short days from his crucifixion. And the crucifixion is also a decisive moment, which gives a message to the world. And the other thing that worries me about this passage is the threat of punishment. Matthew is great at giving grisly warnings but I think he does that to try to help people to show how urgent Jesus's message is and to encourage people to do something about it now. There's no time to wait. In the passage, Jesus is shown as judge and he's separating people as a shepherd would separate sheep and goats. And anyone originally here in the story would have known that sheep and goats can mingle by day, but at night they need different things. Goats need shelter and sheep need leaving out in the fresh air. And as well as being judge and shepherd in the passage, Jesus is also king, which is handy really because this Sunday is known as Christ the King Sunday. And that's the conclusion we're meant to have come to during the last year when we've read through the entire gospel. This Sunday is the grand finale before next Sunday, when we start the story all over again with the first Sunday of Advent. So on Christ the King Sunday, it's a good day to think about inheriting the kingdom. And if you don't think about it too much, this passage makes inheriting the kingdom easy. To inherit the kingdom, you need to have compassion. You need to meet people's basic needs. Feeding the hungry, bringing water to the thirsty, welcoming the stranger, clothing the needy, taking care of the sick, visiting the prisoner. It's all very practical. And these things are still needed today, even though our culture puts lots of checks and balances in place first. But if you read it again, there's a lot more to this parable than a reminder to care. The parable makes Jesus the king, but it also invites us to identify him in the hungry, the needy, people who are sick or in prison. 
So basically, the people who inherit the kingdom are people who see Jesus in others. But look who we're invited to identify Jesus in. Often in our worship and the songs we sing, we lift Jesus high and we want to exalt him. But if we really want to find him, this parable tells us that we have to look down. We have to see him in the people at the very bottom of the pile and in some very challenging people. In this parable, Jesus invites us to see him in criminals, in people with terrible problems with people who aren't able to live or cope as others do. And Jesus is saying that this is where he is. And when you care for the people at rock bottom, you're caring for him. It reminds me of a colleague I had who once dressed up or down as a homeless person and sat on his church steps on a Sunday morning just before the service was due to start. Most people didn't know what to do, so they walked right past. Not a single one recognised him. I know it can be hard to know how to help or what to say, but hello is always a good start. In this passage, Jesus is saying that he's in the desperate drunks in A&E on Christmas Eve, in the people passed out with drugs in Piccadilly Gardens. He's in prison, he's in the food bank, in the clients there. And I did nearly cry yesterday because a client at Trinity Food Bank emailed to say she wanted to drop some food in because she'd received help in the past when she was in need and she wanted to put something back. These are the people Jesus hung about with, sat with, talked with and ate with. And this is where we find him. But it really brings it home when you think that Matthew puts this parable at the point where Jesus has hardly any time left to say anything. He is about to be crucified. He's in Jerusalem. His days are numbered. But he's desperate to tell people that we see him in people in need, in the down and outs. And that's where the kingdom is. And when we minister to them, then we inherit the kingdom. And as we inherit the kingdom, I think we also create it. A new community of people who know their needs, who know they are lost, who allow themselves to be found by the unconditional love of God. And then know joy like they've never known. People who are free to live and to give because they know real love. To inherit and create the kingdom, we need the kind of love that Jesus had, the kind of faith, courage and insight to look at every human being and seeing them, see in them the person of Jesus. And I can't help thinking, what a king, what a king Jesus is. I can't help imagining what the world would look like if every leader did what Jesus did, if every person did that. The more we see Jesus in others, the more we come to know Jesus for ourselves. He reveals himself to us. And that's the heart of the inheritance in Ephesians. The passage is the prayer that we might know Jesus more and see him with the eyes of our hearts. And then we will know that he's called us to hope and to share in the riches of the people who have gone before us and already discovered so much about him. We'll know that God's power is at work in us, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. We don't have to do this on our own. It is Jesus at work in us empowering us to follow him and filling us with love so that we can serve him in others. Ephesians says that God gives us wisdom and revelation so that we come to know Jesus more. And this is our inheritance. 
and then we'll have no problem seeing him everywhere, seeing him in everyone. So forget the million pound house. I hope whoever won it is happy. I want my real inheritance. I want to know Jesus more. I want his power at work in my life. I want to be filled with him and I want to be able to see him and serve him in others. I don't want one house for just me and the cat. I want to be a citizen in Jesus's kingdom in his new community. There's no paid entry, no ticket. All we have to do is say, yes, please, to Jesus. Let us pray. Generous God, graciously you lavish your gifts upon us. You long for us to be the inheritors of your love. You renew us with hope when ours runs dry. You encourage us with the wisdom of those who have gone before us. You empower us with your spirit. Continue to open us to the presence of Jesus, that we might know him more truly and be strengthened to serve him. Loving God, we bring our prayers for all who need to know that they're cradled in your love and care, especially those living on the streets or vulnerably housed, those in the grip of destructive addiction, those in prison. We pray that they will discover the Christ within themselves. We bring our prayers for all who are ill, especially those suffering with COVID, those having treatment for other things, those whose loved ones are ill, those whose treatments have been delayed. We pray for all who work in hospitals and surgeries and care homes. We pray that they will all know your courage and comfort. Loving God, we bring our prayers for all caught up in the effects of this pandemic. For those bereaved or lonely, depressed or fearful. For those whose relationships are under pressure. For children whose education is disrupted. And families coping with homeschooling and uncertainty for young people at university, for people who have lost jobs or facing unemployment, for those whose businesses are crumbling, for those unable to feed themselves or their families. We pray that they will know the security of your love. Loving God, we bring our prayers for the world that's lost its way. We pray for a united human effort to reverse the effects of climate change. For those suffering as a result of war, corrupt leadership, disaster. We pray that we will discover your justice and live in your freedom. And we give thanks for every sign of hope. Loving God, we bring our prayers for the church, that you would help us to be co-creators of your kingdom, loving others as we are loved, finding new ways to care. We pray for church members working hard to look after people, groups, activities, finances, buildings. We pray for church as we face challenges, that you might strengthen our bonds with you and with each other and keep on turning us outwards. 
We pray that we'll know your life-giving power and compassion. And loving God in the silence, we offer our prayers to you. Generous God, in your great love, we inherit your peace. May it fill us and transform us today and always. Amen. And we pray together the Lord's Prayer in whichever form or language we choose. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The hymn that I really wanted uh, to include in this service, I couldn't find in worship lyric video. And because of all the fumbling, I won't uh, play the alternative one, which didn't fit that well anyway. So I just encourage you when you go from here to have a look at the hymn, Jesus Christ is Waiting by John Bell. It's in Singing the Faith. And you can find it on YouTube in lots of different uh, forms. And it's really worth listening to. Jesus Christ is Waiting by John Bell. So I'm going to close with a prayer. And you are welcome to say it along with me. So let us pray. God wraps you in love, gentle and strong. Jesus shares your every moment, faith's adventures. The Spirit opens your heart to love's presence everywhere. You have received an inheritance of hope, an abundance of grace, and the power to share these precious gifts. Go in peace. And the blessing of God the Creator, Son and Spirit, be with us all, today and always. Amen. <laughs>